Hello everybody and welcome back for another local history story. Now a few weeks ago I told you the story about Jamie Moore and his exploits at the fair and how he got caught up with the fairies. And among the many lessons from that story, one of the things you might have picked up is that Dundee was historically quite fond of a drama or two. Um, and throughout history, Dundee has kind of been known as quite a, a town with a taste for the whisky. But the thing about whisky is it can be pretty expensive. And this was certainly the case in the early 19th century. After the Napoleonic War finished in 1812, a high tax was added back onto whisky after a few years of folk just being left to do what they wanted with it. But of course, people will always try and find a way around this, and there was a lot of money to be made if you could distribute whisky without coming to the attention of the authorities. And most of the drinkers and pub owners in Dundee, I'm shocked to report, uh, they were not that bothered about staying on the right side of the law if it meant they could get cheaper whisky. So there was a lot of illegal whisky coming into Dundee. And this whisky would often start its life uh, up in secret stills hidden up in Glen Isla, or even further up into the Highlands in landscapes where you could hide the smoke coming out of the still among the glens and mountains. And smugglers would uh, carry this whisky down on the backs of their ponies uh, on the way to be sold to the thirsty textile workers of Dundee. And because of the way the old roads used to go from the glens, Ochter House became the last sort of logical stopping point before Dundee. So, for a while, Ochter House was a wild frontier town and its inhabitants were only too happy to get involved in the smuggling process in exchange either for money or for a share of the cargo. And I'm sure there were also a few stills lurking in the southern slopes of the Sidlaw Hills as well. And there were a few ways that people could get this illegal whisky into Dundee once you'd got it sort of safely down to Ochter House. Uh, so one popular method was to fill up pigs' bladders uh, with whisky, which sounds really appetising. Uh, but these were great because they were sort of round um, and they didn't clink about like bottles or china containers. And you could hide them either at the bottom of a sack under some grain or something like that. Or also uh, for women, the long skirts that they wore at the time, these were great for hiding a bladder full of whiskey under as well. And another technique that people had was to put a false bottom in a milk pail. So you could have, uh, it would look just like a normal milk pail, but once you poured the milk out, you could get into the compartment and there was your whiskey. So a lot of uh, what looked like unsuspicious uh, agricultural sales going on from Ochter House probably had something else going on as well. But the whisky as it came down from the glens was in quite large quantities. Uh, one of the measurements they used for whisky at this time was uh, an anchor. And one anchor was about 10 gallons and people would bring down sort of loads of half anchor barrels at a time. So people are dealing in quite substantial quantities of whisky here. And of course, the government knew fine well that people were trying to get around the tax laws. So they would employ bands of excisemen, also known in Scotland as gaugers, to go around inspecting places and people that they were a bit suspicious of. And there was plenty of them sent from Dundee to Ochter House to try and sniff out whisky before it got into the city. And there was one incident in 1813 uh, when a band of gaugers had been sent up on an investigation 
and they were thrilled to discover nine and a half anchors. So that's about 95 gallons of whiskey hidden among the crops in a field just outside of Ochter House. And they loaded it up onto their cart and they set off to take it back to Dundee, where I'm sure it would have been responsibly destroyed by the officials. But as they were making their way south through the town of Ochter House itself, three Highlanders leapt out from the undergrowth at the side of the road, defending their cargo, and they hurled stones and thrashed the excisemen with sticks. And the battle went on for an hour or more, and the gaugers were just about holding their attackers off, but they were putting up a good fight. And when they saw some farmers coming up uh, from Ochter House, coming past on the road, the gaugers expected that their fellow law-abiding citizens would leap in to provide help. But they were sorely disappointed because the farmers carried on their way and left them to it. But eventually, because the gaugers were better armed and the Highlanders were tired from their long journey, after managing to grab back three and a half anchors of whiskey from the clutches of the law, they decided to cut their losses and run into the woods to hide. But incidents like this were not enough to put the excisemen off coming back to Ochter House regularly for more raids. On another occasion around the same time, they paid a visit to one of the largest farms of Ochter House. Now, when the farmer saw this band of gaugers coming up the road to his house, his heart must have sunk because he knew that scattered around his buyers and outhouses were several barrels of the finest illegal whiskey. But he was a quick thinker, so he got his men together and told them the plan and sent them off to work. And when the gaugers arrived at the door, the farmer welcomed them in and he decided before they went about their inspection that they should sit down and have a dram with him. Now, the gaugers were never dreaming that anybody would be either stupid enough or cheeky enough to offer them a contraband dram, so they assumed this was all above board and they sat down to have a drink and a chat before going about their work. And as they talked, the farmer happened to lean against the kitchen table and block the view from the window where you could see his men scurrying through the fields, rolling the barrels ahead of them, making sure all the whiskey was even better hidden. So when they finally went about their inspection, there was nothing to be found on the farm at all. So these are just a few tales uh, from the long history of smuggling in the glens and around the Dundee area. And there are plenty more uh, sort of true crime stories from Dundee's past as well. So thank you for listening and we'll see you again next week.